Sections 9.3 and 9.4 largely go together. So in 9.3, <clears throat> we're learning about overriding methods, which is something involved with inheritance. So an override occurs when a superclass and a subclass have a method by the exact same signature. Don't confuse this with overloading. Overloading methods have the same name, but they have different parameter types. We're talking the exact same signature now, but occurring in two different places, one in the subclass, one in the superclass. So when you call a method, it has to be defined within its class or within its superclass. You could actually have it defined in both places. That would be an example of an override. When we write a subclass, typically we're going to put in an overridden method or maybe an additional method or additional instance variables. We try to avoid using the same instance variables in both classes. That's actually not an override. That's called shadowing. And they behave a little bit different than overrides do. It's not going to be a focal point of this class since we tend to keep our instance fields private. It shouldn't be that big of an issue. Uh, and hopefully it's not something that we'll encounter. Uh, subclasses will inherit all public methods like we've seen before. Uh, and these methods remain public. So you don't want to try to change their access from like public to private as you swap between them if you're creating overrides. So to show this here, I created a class called account. And you could think of this as just like a basic bank account. Okay. Uh, and I've kept things pretty simple. We have a name on the account. They'd be like the owner. Uh, the balance is how much money they have. And we're going to give them an interest rate set automatically to 3% in the constructor. Okay, and I've put in some basic accessor methods like get name, we can get the balance, and we can add and subtract to the balance with these deposit and withdraw methods that I've provided. Um, they're just essentially keeping track on a few things like we don't want to try to deposit a negative amount of money that might screw things up. And if we're going to withdraw, we don't want to allow the balance to dip below zero. And same thing with the positive numbers. Okay, so that's how we can add and take money out of the account. Here we can add interest. So if it's 3%, we'll take our money plus 3% more. That's how we'll add interest. And I've put in a basic two string method, uh, which is going to print out the account name and how much money they have. Okay, so if we went to the main method right now, I've created an account with the name Brian, $1,000. Later, I deposit 100, 3% interest. We see right here, picked up 33 extra dollars, okay? 3% of 1100 at that point, because we added 100 to it. Um, and then later I took away $200, so ended up with a balance of 933. Okay, so that's our basic account here, all right? And then uh, I've made a subclass called bonus account. All right, so what is a bonus account? Well. At some banks, they might provide incentives to like keep a lot of money or make a lot of transactions and you get kind of like a premium account. Maybe you have to pay an annual fee on it. Uh, so in our bonus account, in addition to all of the properties that account has, okay, so I've inherited from the account class. So we have all that stuff. We have a name, we have a balance, we can withdraw, we can deposit, we can add interest, we can do all of those things. But in addition to that, we have a cash advance limit. This is my example of an additional instance variable. So this is something that a bonus account has that an account doesn't have. Okay, so a typical account holder at this bank, they don't have a cash advance limit. So that's not an option to them. But if you qualify for a bonus account, you do. You have this extra property. Uh, my bonus account constructor is going to pass up the name and the balance but it's also going to initialize that cash advance limit, okay? Um, and so we've asked for one extra parameter here as a result. Here, uh, I have an add interest method. This is an example of an override. So you might remember in our account, we had an add interest method. Same exact signature, public void add interest, okay? Come into the bonus account. We have public void add interest. This is an overridden method. What that means is this method, notice, gets an extra 1% of interest over regular accounts. You might recall the regular account got 3%. 3% 3 of 1,100 gave me 33 extra dollars. This gets 4%. 4% 4 
two thousand dollars okay and i think we added a hundred in there so it was actually twenty one hundred four percent of twenty one hundred dollars became eighty four dollars when i added interest to Kevin's account okay because he got that additional one percent now how does it know what to do well if we look over at the main method right here i called add interest okay that was on an account so it ran the add interest method from the account class. That makes sense. And down here, when I was using reference B, that was a bonus account. So when I called add interest on the bonus account, it ran it from the bonus account method and gave me 4% instead of 3%. Makes sense. It's a little bit trickier than that. And uh, we'll deal with that in the future for today. Okay, we'll just think about it this way. That's an example of an override. Okay, so an override, same exact method signature, but it appears in both the super class and in the subclass. Okay, so right here, add interest, I used 4% instead of 3, and that's how I got it to do that. I've given some additional method here. Uh, this is called cash advance. You won't find that method in an account. If an account tried to call cash advance, it wouldn't work. Okay, right. You don't inherit that direction. You do inherit this direction. And then I've overridden the two string method to give us a little bit more info. So it includes the cash advance limit. Now, what you'll also notice here is that I'm using things like get balance. Okay. I'm using something here, get name. Okay. Why am I allowed to use the deposit method? Well, I've inherited those methods from account. So we see deposit here, get balance, get name. Okay, since I've inherited from here, I'm allowed to use these things. So my bonus account can do all that stuff and it can do this stuff. Okay, so it's got this additional property. It can do all the other stuff plus more. If I tried to use cash advance on my account, okay, so like right here, if I said a dot cash advance and I tried to advance say $100, that won't work. Inheritance doesn't run that direction. Inheritance runs from the super class down to the subclass. Okay, so we got to be careful. We can't we can't call the cash advance method here. We could call the cash advance method down here on our B. So if I said B dot cash advance, this should bump up my balance by that amount as long as I stay within the proper realm, which in this case was 150. So I, I only asked for 100. And then that would bump up my balance uh, by $100. Uh, I did something wrong. <laughs> oh. I guess we don't specify. We just put it in. Sorry. All right. So that bumped us up $150. All right. Well, it would be nice if there was a way that I could do this a little bit differently. So for example, like right here, I had to kind of just be a little bit redundant. That's, that's what the super class sub uh, two string did anyway. So like the it, right here, it just ran that. Like when I called this two string method, I was basically recreating the two string method here. I see like another little issue here too. Like what, what if, what if at some point, like, you know, interest rates fluctuate. So what if say a month later, the interest rate on the accounts went up a half percent and it became 0.035. That would require then a programmer to actually go into the bonus account class and make the reflective change here. It's too bad that I can't get this add interest method to sort of interact with the add interest method from here. And it's too bad that I can't get the two string method from the subclass to maybe call on the two string method from the super class. Turns out there's a way to do it. Okay. So we actually can get these two classes to connect with each other. All right. So how would I do it? How would I get these two classes to connect? We're going to use the word super in a slightly different way. So if you look at my 9.4 notes, I've got the exact same stuff going on. Okay. But I've put in a couple of little changes. 
we've seen previously how to use the word super to invoke the constructor of the super class. Turns out you can use the word super in connection with any public behaviors and attributes as well. Now, typically we don't have public attributes, right? We keep our instance fields private, so it's not really an issue for us. You can try playing around with it a little bit if you're curious, but we're really gonna focus on these methods. If I have an overridden method in my subclass, okay, like add interest, I could actually still call the add interest method from the super class, but it's a little bit tricky. How do I like, like, I can't just call it because if I just called it, it would actually sort of create like an infinite circle because it, it would call itself and then just like start over, run this code, call itself, start over. It would actually create like an infinite loop. It would just be going around in circles because it would just keep invoking itself and starting over again. But there's a way to steer it away from here. I could say, go call the one from the super class and run it instead. And so now what's cool about this is if somehow your interest rate changed, you wouldn't have to do anything at all in your subclass because this was getting the interest from the super class. So if changes were made up there, they'll be reflected here. This is gonna run off that three and a half percent interest rate. You're still gonna get your bonus percent. I've actually set it up a little bit different here. Like at, in my checking account, I get I get like a little bit of a percentage at the end of the month if I meet certain requirements. I have to make like a certain number of transactions and keep a certain balance. And there's a few requirements actually. So I've set up my bonus account today to say, you know, if you want to get that bonus, cool, but you've got to have at least $1,000 in there. And if you don't, you're going to be treated like everybody else. So the way I'm going to run it is if you meet the requirements, you get that extra 1%. But if you don't, you get treated like everybody else. Without the word super, I wouldn't really have the ability to do this because I'm kind of relying on the old method and I'm also relying on the new method. So the word super here allows me to actually get both methods to run at the same time. I can say, go do it the old way. But as long as I check out here, I'm going to give them that extra 1% also, okay? And I've done something like that in the two string as well. Remember I was saying how it was a little bit redundant earlier? I was just doing all the same stuff, like printing out the name and the balance. So this time I said, hey, you know what? I don't want to be redundant. Go run the two string from the super class, which is going to give you the account name, the account balance, and all that stuff. And it's going to give it to you as a string. Go get that string. Bring it back here. Okay. Put it in. And then I'll just add this little bit to it. And so now I get the same exact result that I got before, which was the basic info. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> as long as I don't spell something correctly. Um, sorry. Let's try this. Okay. <clears throat> I must have been playing around with it earlier and changed that. I'm sorry. So I get the same exact info I got before, which was the account name and the account balance. And now I've added on to that the cash advance limit. Okay. Uh, and yeah, we can see some of the other changes here too. So here we picked up that extra percent. I changed it to three and a half is why the number is a little bit different. If we went back to here and we changed this to be uh, a 3% interest rate, it would go. It, it would actually not only reflect this in your account, but it would also reflect it in the bonus account. And that's nice. So, so we don't want to have to be jumping around going to multiple classes. The fewer places we can go, the better. If you're going to have a really big complex code structure, you don't want it to be dependent on like a whole bunch of changes. You want the fewest number of changes imaginable so that you can keep things up to date as you process new things.